So you know we've made a lot of videos about why Vancouver, Washington is an amazing place to live. It's a great option. It's a place that I love. It's a place that I, where I spend a lot of time, where I really enjoy things. But I want to be balanced. So in this video, I want to talk about three reasons that you might not want to live in Vancouver, Washington. It's possible, I know, but maybe these are gonna affect you so much that you wanna take Vancouver completely off the table. Maybe you don't care, and we are gonna find out. So this video, once again, is all about three reasons not to move to Vancouver, Washington. Are you ready for another exciting, exhilarating video? Well, you know what to do. I've already seated, but now you need to sit down, you need to buckle up and get ready, because here we go. <laughs> Hey everybody, it's your host here, Dave Baker from Got Northwest and the Moving and Living in Washington team. Now, if it's your first time on the channel, all you have to do is tap that little subscribe button and click that little bell. So you'll be notified every time I put out a new video all about living in Vancouver, Camas, Washougal, Battleground. There's so many different places in the Southwest Washington area that are exciting. Of course, if you're thinking about Portland, Oregon, it's not that far away, so you can reach out to us for that as well. All you have to do is give us a call on the phone, send us an email, send a text message, whatever it takes to get in touch with us. And the team cannot wait to help you because this is what they love doing. All right, let's get started and dive into this hot topic. So we just need to get going and start the countdown. Are you ready? Number one, the weather. Yes. The weather is discussed in many videos about the Pacific Northwest. Why is that? Because if you are not from Washington or Oregon, you may not be accustomed to the rain, the gray. Why am I making this video indoors today? Hmm. Oh, could it be because it's wet outside? Yeah. I'm not going to make you the best videos when it's wet outside. And in some of my videos, of course you've seen, it's gray. It's not a secret that there are probably hundreds of gray days a year. Now, I've seen different statistics that say something like 163 days of gray to 200 plus days. Does that mean it rains all the time? Not necessarily, but it certainly is gray outside and that can have a negative effect on a lot of people's moods. I wanna say something about the rain since we're talking about the weather. People tell me, well, doesn't it rain all day? Well, hold on. There's a difference between raining every day in winter and raining all day. So what I'm telling you here is that it could rain for a few hours and then the sun could come out or there might be no sun, but no rain. And I will say that after spending years in the Pacific Northwest, yeah, I did finally start to notice that, hey, the sun didn't come out for four or five days. If it did, I just saw it off in the distance, like it was some kind of dream, like there was a dream of the sun. Now there's another side to this coin, which I found interesting. I just saw a post on social media where someone posted a picture of the rain and it said, welcome back. That caught me off guard. Okay, because I would prefer that it did not rain. But something I'm gonna say is that people in the Northwest are very resilient, whether it's in Portland or Vancouver, or any of these areas, anywhere along the Columbia River, it's, it's pretty amazing how resilient they are. First of all, they don't carry umbrellas very often. You can really tell a tourist when they're carrying an umbrella. That's actually something people talk about. Additionally, they still seem to go about their day. It's not about the weather, it's about having the right clothing. And I understood that. That's why you often see me wearing clothes from brands that happen to cater to people who live in the Northwest. They're national brands, but since the Northwest is an apparel capital, right? Portland, Oregon, you know, you've got all those big companies, you know, all the apparel companies, and you've also got, of course, Nike is a huge apparel company, um, you, do have, uh, <laughs> you do have a lot of options for clothing. And uh, it really changed my life to get the right clothing. So yeah, I have water resistant clothes. And it's not the end of the world, but I don't enjoy walking in the water. Um, I do prefer it, if it's gray that it's not raining. But the reality is, look, it is gray a lot. And if you cannot handle that during the winter and sometimes from fall to spring, it just depends on the year, then that might be a big turnoff. Okay, let's talk about item number two on the list. 
in Vancouver, Washington, there is a lack of public transportation. So if you are comparing living in Vancouver to living in Portland, Oregon, they are not the same. Yes, Vancouver does have a bus system. They have the C-Tran system. And I do want to commend the city and surrounding areas on putting in nice bus stops. I like to have a nice bus stop. I like it to be covered. I like to have the schedule posted. I like it to make things easy for me. So while you do have that C-Tran uh, and the bus system, you do not have the streetcars like Portland, Oregon has. You do not have the MAX, which is the bigger train, which stands for Metro Area Express. You don't have the long distance uh, trains where you take the MAX to the West system and you can go further out. You can't regularly commute, you know, 30 miles easily. Or, you know, if you live in the Pearl District of Portland, of course, you can just ride the streetcars. If you live in the Alphabet District, all these different neighborhoods, you can ride the streetcars, even on the east side. And the east side means the east side of the Willamette River in the city of Portland. Not the Columbia River. Don't mix up the Columbia and the Willamette. Make sure we, we're going to try to put up a map here so that you can see there are two rivers. Always remember that. So if public transportation is a major issue for you, Vancouver could be a problem. Now, if you do live and work in the downtown area, yes, you can walk around. You could also live very close to work where you could walk in theory, but if it's raining outside, that could be an issue. If you do live in downtown or the surrounding areas of downtown Vancouver and you do like that neighborhood, you have some walkability. And when you reach out to the team, when you contact us, let us know what you're looking for. Is walkability a priority? Is access to public transportation even a priority for you? I know many people prefer to drive their own car and it's not really a concern. So everybody has a different, a different situation there. Okay, let's talk about the next issue about living in Vancouver, Washington. That's item number three. That is the traffic when commuting to Portland, Oregon. Many of the jobs are in Portland, Oregon. It's not a surprise, right? It's, it's more of a metropolis. So if you do need to regularly commute and drive on the five or Highway 5 or two, Highway 205, there will be traffic if you're commuting during rush hour for example, if you were commuting from Vancouver to Portland during rush hour, yes, it could take you 40 or more minutes. And that depends on how far you have to go. You might not be going to the tip of Portland. You might be going further into the city. You might be going downtown. You might be going even further south. So reality check. Okay, there is traffic there. Hey, if you're going the other way, no big deal. And guess what happens around 5 o'clock? If you want to go to Vancouver from Portland, it's busy. There's traffic. Yes, there is traffic. How do I know this? because my friends somehow love to pick whenever I'm in Portland for us to meet up for dinner. And they said, hey, can you drive over to Vancouver? Um, you wanna meet for dinner at 5.30 on Thursday and you know I'm in Portland? It's, it's almost like they're watching me. Now, a quick note about the traffic inside of Southwest Washington. If you have to drive inside, like you have to drive from Camas or Washougal to Vancouver along 14, that'd be Highway 14, Cool little George Washington logo you see on the freeway. There's barely any traffic. I mean, I, I don't even think it's a fact. To me, I barely see any cars on the road. If I'm driving out to Camas or Washougal, like if I'm heading out to the new Washougal waterfront area, don't worry, we're gonna make a video about that. I'm excited about that. Um, there's like no traffic. If you need to go to downtown Camas, downtown Washougal for dinner, even if you need to go north on the five, let's say you want to go to you know, Battleground, Ridgefield, other parts of Southwest Washington. Even if you have to go all the way to Centralia, Centralia, which would be on the map about halfway between Seattle and Vancouver, it's not too bad. I, I actually, I don't even recall barely seeing any traffic at rush hour times. And I intentionally drove at those times because I wanted to make this video. So I wanted to talk about that. So I've been through it many times. So those are three reasons that you might not want to move to Vancouver. What are other things that people bring up? I have heard of you know, SAD or seasonal affected disorder that comes up again because of the weather, because of the gray. Um, but I haven't heard a lot of other things that really drive people who are looking in the Northwest. For example, if you're coming from a place where they have all new homes and you go to Vancouver and you see a lot of older homes, yeah, some people don't like older homes, they prefer a brand new home, but we do have options. If you are looking for a new build, let's talk about Salmon Creek. In fact, the most important thing is that when you reach out to the team, you let us know that that's a priority for you. So what's your next step? Okay, if you're thinking about moving to Vancouver, Washington, or anywhere in Southwest Washington, or Portland, Oregon, you've got to reach out to the team. Send us an email, send us a text message, give us a call on the phone, okay? The team is local, the team loves to help you. Everyone is excited. 
you know, we talk about this stuff all the time. Me, I'm a big fan of digging into the city and always finding something new. That's why sometimes if you look at some of my posts, you'll see me just posting a picture of a statue I saw. Because you know what? There's a lot of culture in the Pacific Northwest. If someone who was not originally born here, when I came up to the Northwest, I was like, whoa, look at all like culture here. It's so different. There's a lot of history. Um, you know, you've got the Lewis and Clark Trail and things of that nature. And obviously, we're going to have to make another video about why we love Vancouver, why we love Southwest Washington and the entire Northwest. And I just want to remind you, one reward of all of this rain is the lush greenery. And while we're not sitting in it right now and we're in an office, believe me, I'm probably going to go hiking this weekend. Okay, everybody. I cannot wait to see you in the next video. Make sure that you like and subscribe and drop a comment below. Let me know what else you want to hear. And go to gotnorthwest.com and subscribe to our newsletter. Okay, everybody. Take care. I'll see you soon.